Hello, welcome to the show. Today I'm in the Barossa Valley, but not for wine tasting. Today I'm taking a new olfactory challenge. But first, here's what else we have in store for you. Ron discovers a hidden gem in the Clare Valley, a unique blend of heritage and wine. And we're headed upstream to beautiful Berry. But first, here's Michael. Now, traditionally, you wouldn't think garden lovers would have much use for a phone. They certainly don't dig holes and they won't weed your favourite garden patch, but they become a very useful tool when it comes to identifying plants. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today. They say that trees are the noblest works of nature, and I agree. I reckon they're the number one factor that make our suburbs a better place to live in. There's nothing quite as beautiful or desirable as a tree-lined street. Well, the City of Burnside has developed the state-of-the-art website to educate people about the trees in its public spaces. Called the Urban Forest Initiative, it's a first for South Australia and only one of a few in the world. The Council's Environmental Coordinator, Ben Seamark, has brought along his tablet to give me a lesson here in Hazelwood Park. Ben, tell me how the website works. OK, Michael, well, you can use the website to locate where you are within the reserve, and from that you can identify trees that are around you. If we press this geolocation button here, it takes us into where we're actually standing. There and Yep, and from that we can actually see what trees are around us. It gives us a name up here, grey box, and we can click on a link here, and it will take us to a Wikipedia site where we can learn more about the tree. This cute little fellow knows that trees bring huge rewards to both wildlife and people. They raise property values, enhance air quality and increase feelings of well-being. I've been on my soapbox about it for years and what I love about this website is it lists the superpowers of each individual tree. Now Ben, what about the agonis over here? Yes, this is an agonis flexuosa, which is a Western Australian willow myrtle. It's a very common tree for the city of Burnside. And you can see the range of benefits that it provides our community. It sets around four cubic metres of stormwater, removes around 650 grams of air pollutants, and it produces around 67 kilograms of oxygen. That is something else, isn't it? Another advantage of the urban forest is that by recording the exact number of trees in the area, they can keep an eye on how they're faring. It's a huge undertaking, but well worth it. We've mapped around 36,000 trees. We've still got a lot more mapping to do. And is our tree canopy growing or dwindling at the moment? We undertook a study in 2016 and we identified that we've lost 10% of our canopy cover across the city of Burnside. So we want to address that and make sure we don't lose any more. And the website can help with that too. If you live in the area and have a spot you think could do with some greening up, just send a request to the council. One, two, three. I've always been a tree hugger. And this magnificent gum holds special meaning to me and my family. It would take nine people with joined hands to give this big old tree a hug. And I did that 30 years ago and the kids that did that with me still talk about it. She's a beautiful old dame. There's lots of evidence to show that places like this make people feel more comfortable, relaxed and happier. And that's what we want to see continue through our parks and reserves. We want to make sure that these trees are here, not only for our current generation, but for future generations as well. Now you don't need to be a computer genius to use the Urban Forest Initiative website. It really is a breeze. And even if you don't live in Burnside, it's a great tool to identify a species you're interested in and see if it's right for your home. So grab your phone and get planning and planting. Coming up, we head to the heart of the Riverland. Winter is a great time to head to Berry in the Riverland. We've got fabulous weather, really nice Mediterranean style climate and lots of days of sunshine. It's really peaceful, we have lots and lots of bird life. Grab a canoe, grab a kayak and really explore some of the great backwaters and natural scenery that we have here on the Murray River. 
Riverbush Cottages is located just out of Berry on the way to Renmark. They offer four self-contained cottages, so you can rent them out individually, or if you've got a larger group coming, it's a really good option to actually rent them all out together. One of the great things about the property is the group fire pit area, which is right in the centre. Sit around with the people that you're travelling with and enjoy a glass of local red. It's also pet friendly, which is really great. A lot of people are travelling with their pets these days. There's also a private riverfront area, which is exclusive for guests of Riverbush Cottages. The cottages are really popular for people who water ski. They can bring their own boats, moor them here. They're a home away from home. It's a great place to base yourself for your winter getaway in the Riverland. Hello, I'm Eric Semler from 919 Wines. I'm the winemaker and proprietor together with my wife Jenny of this business and we are based at Berry. Here at 919 Wines, we believe very strongly in doing things ethically and also our business is very much pointed at sustainability. So we therefore have two organically certified vineyards. All of our table wines are organically certified. We have pursued using Mediterranean varieties which suit our climate here. And that has worked wonderfully well in that we have wines which have flavour, they have depth and a softness on the palate which people love. Another thing that we really specialise in is fortified wine. We are very fortunate to win the Australian Winemaker of the Year from Wine State magazine. That wasn't only a win for us, but a win for the Riverland as well. If you visit 919 Wines, our cellar door is inside the winery, so it's quite a unique holistic experience here. You'll see wine styles you're not familiar with, but you'll always find something that you like. We promise you that. You'll always find something that you like. <laughs> Hi, I'm Merle. Together with my husband Mark, we are the managers of the Berry Riverside Holiday Park. Our park is owned by the Berry War Memorial Community Centre. We're trying to make our park family friendly. Firstly, we have the beautiful swimming pools, we have jumping pillows, we have a fire pit, which is amazing. It's been an absolute winner in the park. We are going on to our new project which is going to be up and running by the end of December, and that will be our mini golf. We have caravan sites, camping sites, cabins. They start from the very basic, going up to two bedroom, three bedroom. We also have our group stays facility, which is something that we're really proud of. It's a private facility. It has 15 bedrooms and can sleep up to 54 people. It also has a state-of-the-art catering kitchen, which can cater for up to 100 people. There's no reason for anybody not to come to Berry when it's winter. The days are beautiful. It is absolutely amazing. Next, where to design your own signature scent. You'll smell like a cinnamon bun. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. <laughs> Field has always been a showpiece for the Barossa, and not just for wine. In the building behind me, they used to make Sepult's vinegar. You probably had a bottle in your pantry as a kid, but now the building has a wonderful new purpose. This 1880s beauty is now a temple to olive oil and just about everything you can make with it. The enterprise is called Vass Virgin. Vass being a place near Margaret River, the original home of the business, and virgin being, well, the purest of olive oils. Normally, I shake hands when I meet someone. Today, I make the acquaintance of Vass Virgin's Ashley Keegan by exfoliating instead. It's so beautiful, smooth as. And once you've rinsed it off, then just sort of pat dry. The range of all natural soaps and body care products here is vast. But Ash explains the beginnings were very simple. 25 years ago, founders Louis and Edwina Sherini lived on a farm in Western Australia and were struggling to find natural products for their three kids with severe eczema. So they created their own. Necessity is the mother of invention and uh, they started with a pot on the stove and a wooden spoon. And basically to understand the products and understand the ingredients of the products that they're putting together. Now the business has created a new South Australian base as well, but still applies the same personal touch. We manufacture from scratch and it's very hands-on. And we do that in an amphitheatre where everybody can look at what we do with the banter between Jay Manufacturing and the people walking through the door. I love that about it. It's just all out there, bare for us to show the customers exactly what's going on with that. 
its co-founder, Edwina Sharini herself, is going to guide me on the next part of my vast virgin voyage. Welcome to Natural Perfumery Ladies. Today we're going to learn about how to make a perfume that's made from essential oils, absolutes and CO2 extracts. Yes, the hands-on approach applies to visitors as well. You can book in for a lip balm workshop or a perfume masterclass like this and come away smelling like roses. First we have a practice run with Eau de Cologne to learn how to choose a balanced blend of essential oils. I want you to open each one of those. The easiest way to do it is to take your Eau de Cologne strip, empty the essential oils out and then smell the two together. Edwina explains about top, middle and base notes and which categories the various scents fall into. As you're smelling it, you'll actually get like a story. You'll have some woody notes and you'll have some floral notes and you'll have some spicy notes and you might identify something like pepper in it. So those sort of things are why we dilute the oil and how we can actually make a natural perfume out of it. There's a heady array to choose from and it's vital to write down how much of each essential oil goes in because it's a very precise art. You'll smell like a cinnamon bun. Yeah, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> Oh, that might work for me. Wet dog and sand shoes, I think I'll call this. <laughs> when we've all had a good practice, it's time for the real thing. Edwina gives us a theme by way of a picture and we try to recreate the mood it evokes. For my mountain lake, I'm looking for woody, earthy, cooling notes and I'm completely absorbed in the process. I wouldn't call myself a perfume person, but I am calling this, this is way more fun than wine tasted. And I cannot believe I just said that. I'm pretty pleased with the end results, bottled up to take home. But my nose has been getting plenty of exercise and now my taste buds are getting jealous. Luckily, there's an entire room dedicated to gourmet treats, from oils to dressings, dukkas and cheeses, with plenty of tasting opportunities. And in the spirit of hands-on learning, you can also book in for an olive oil masterclass. It's a similar sort of structured tasting to a, a detailed wine tasting, but then we'll tie that back into how to best use of olive oil with food and how to prepare and choose the different appropriate oils. But also talk to you about faults in oils as well and, and how to identify a great oil to enjoy. You'll find Bass Virgin right next to Sepultsfield Winery and it's open seven days a week. But bookings are essential for workshops and masterclasses. It's a very different treat for the senses in the beautiful Barossa. After the break, Mintero's new mini renaissance. It's one of our most picturesque wine growing regions, the spectacular Clare Valley. Tucked away amid the rows and rows of vines are little hidden gems, like the historic town of Mintero, a treasure trove of blue stone and local slate. In years past, it was one of the go-to places in the valley, especially its legendary pub. But for a time, it was closed. Not anymore. It's such an iconic place to come to and people you talk to in Adelaide have all, wow, magpie stump. We went there and we had a great weekend. And everyone remembers it, so we want to sort of build it back up to that and make it a destination from Adelaide. Originally built as a watering hole for bullockies transporting copper from Borough to Port Wakefield, the Magpie Stumps wood-fired oven is now ready to feed those heading to the valley for a well-earned break. And a crisp Riesling, or red of course. Built in 1851 and rejuvenated in 2018, that's what we're trying to go with. Everything is a total rebuild, so it's brand new. We've given it a good legs to stand on for another good hundred years. That's music to the ears of Peter and Yvonne Cloak, the owners of Riesling Studios. They've recently completed a makeover on a former Mintero attraction. It's a blend of fine art and sleek modern lines at the Iron Gate Studio B&B. It was an art studio and Peter and I came up with the idea that it would make beautiful accommodation. One thing that was missing in Mintero, even in the Clare Valley, there's not a lot of boutique accommodation. So we set about renovating it and turned it into a two bedroom, two bathroom, five star accommodation. Peter's feet are now well and truly anchored on terra firma in this heritage haven in the Clare Valley. But that wasn't always the case. There's a good mark that's taken by the high flyer in Peter Cloak. 
So he's set for a good one today. In the late 60s and throughout the 70s, Peter Cloak was taking hangers for both Richmond and the North Adelaide Football Club. But a teaching career saw him move to the country, where he met Yvonne and set off on a tree change of sorts, establishing B&Bs in Country SA. When I left North Adelaide, I ended up going to Bordertown as a football coach up to Roxby Downs and then we started to holiday in the Clare Valley. One holiday session we bought some B&Bs and then I've been here in the Clare Valley for 13 years now. This is where we're going to be for the rest of our days. And why wouldn't you with great scenery, so many wineries and cellar doors and of course the great food experiences of the Clare Valley. But it's here in the cosy little town of Mintero that Peter and Yvonne have made their home and have recently added another Riesling Studios acquisition, William Hunt's Retreat. It's an old barn that's been beautifully renovated. It's a two bedroom and a one bedroom studio. It gives people the choice now in our suite of accommodation. If they want to stay somewhere contemporary, we've got Iron Gate Studio B&B. If they're looking for something old, heritage listed, spa, wood fire, it's got that heritage feel. Renovations to a classic pub, a stylish art gallery, and now a heritage landmark. Things are looking up for a town with a unique look. Slate was discovered here in 1854 and really got going as an extractive industry in 56. And it's basically kept going ever since. In the old days, it employed over 50 people. And it explains this town's warm heritage feel, both inside and out. And now, thanks to some passionate locals, it's undergoing a mini boom. For a time, this town went through a bit of a slump. It fell off the tourist radar. But now, Mintero is well and truly making a comeback. A mini renaissance is underway. So it's the perfect time to celebrate its unique blend of heritage and wine. Why not share in Mintero's recent renaissance with a weekend away in the gorgeous Clare Valley? Riesling Studios can cater for your every need. For details, head to their website. Well, that's about it for this week's show, but don't forget, if you'd like any more details about the stories you've seen, have a look at our website and keep in touch on social media. We love to know what you've been up to. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.